Richard, a tough result on Sunday against Saints. How have the boys reacted in training early part of this week? Yeah, a tough result and more the performance, Phil, as, as much as anything too. Uh, and I think for us as a group, important to, to try and understand why uh, and find out the reasons why uh, we had such a such a poor performance. I think in the 12 or 18 months, if you like, with COVID, uh, amount of time I've been in charge, you know, I've never really felt as a team we've been lacking in effort. You know, we, we've lost games at times because aspects of a game have been down, or, or we've not been good enough and beaten by another team. But that's the first time in, in all this time really we've had to, you know, go to the front of the room and, and and question our effort. You know, the way that we let tries in um, were particularly soft without going for everyone. You know, five or six of the tries were just in, incredibly soft tries, uh, and that was the the biggest concern for me was the fact that we felt we'd let ourselves down in, in so many effort areas at the weekend which I just don't think has been a you know been a trait of us. Even going back to round one, you know, I thought our effort wasn't too bad even though we got you know we got our performance mightily wrong. But our effort were poor. You know, one reason I will say is I thought the opposition were exceptionally good. Uh, but at the same time, you know, if we're serious about contending this year, they're the standards that are being set by the very best team in the competition. Uh, so we need to, you know, we need to understand what's going to get us up there. And there's a variety of reasons I think uh, that the boys, you know, can throw up and, and we can look into. You know, first of all, we look at ourselves. Did we get the week right? Um, coming back off Covid obviously some unknowns did we, we, did we get the balance and, and load a, a training right we had a particularly flat and what we thought an energyless performance after sort of 10 minutes into the game um, you know we also look at some individuals in there on the preparation and how they performed and, and where they're at at this moment in time um, so yeah it's uh, it, it's been a a, a more difficult and challenging week than normally, and normally what you know a defeat diff, can bring. I think there were a few, uh, you know, the best way I can put it is we're not going to let a 48 zip defeat slide and brush it under the carpet and get ready for it next week. You know, we need to understand why we perform so badly. And you spoke previously about the spirit of this group and, yeah. and their determination, and presumably they've taken that, that feedback on board and, and ready to. To, to right those wrongs this week? Yeah, to be fair, they're a pretty accountable bunch. Uh, I think we work in an environment where they can openly speak to each other, so you know, probably some things in our review on Monday that would have been difficult to hear. You know, we cancelled day off Monday, we wanted to get that done and dusted straight away and, and not eat into the rest of our week on a training day. So we brought the guys in Monday. Yeah, we were very open and, and honest forum uh, and probably some difficult things to hear. Uh, to each other about our performance at the weekend but but the positive for me is that they can speak to each other like that too without fear of uh, you know fear of reprisals repercussions or, or being shot down so uh, the proof of, in the pudding will be this week and now we turn up hopefully we can prove that, that that's a one off um, we clearly didn't start the game well again Huddersfield but we thought we got enough momentum and, and again I, w I wouldn't really question our effort in that game uh, so, you know, for us, it's important that in in the time of adversity that we've got now, we've got an opportunity to to right a few wrongs at the weekend. Because you know, we we said to the boys, Phil, and we genuinely believe this, the club has had a you know tough couple of years, well documented, tough couple of years, and, and we feel that the current group, uh, you know, on the back of making some headway last year, had, had really started to build up trust with each other. You know, with the hierarchy of the club, and importantly with our fans, and and performances like that erode that trust and and throw a heap of question marks about us all. So we've got to very much answer those questions as, as quick as we can over the you know certainly this week and and over the upcoming weeks. We were missing Michi Myler, Rob Lewin, and Comrade Harrell last week. Any yeah. of those possibly going to feature this week? Yeah, chance. Yeah, chance. Obviously, we've still got a little bit of uh, t time to go. Uh, these some question marks and doubt in a couple of instances, but we think that, you know more likely to play than not. Um, and obviously, Liam Suckliff will be back this week to add to our squad. We've copped a couple of injuries at the weekend on the back of James Donaldson. Uh, we will lose Alex Meller, and we've obviously lost uh, Alex Suckliff, who failed his uh, HIA again. So with a couple of guys down from the weekend, so yeah, to be able to get some boys back would be. Be certainly welcome on the back of last week. 
And breaking news today, obviously with the, the news out of Hull and, and Salford, there's been a rearrange of, uh, of kick-off times in, in our case for, for this week, an extra day's rest. We're now playing on Sunday evening instead of Saturday. Yeah, it does. It gives us an extra day's rest and prep, if you like. We, we, we certainly get an extra training session in and a little bit better preparation time, if you like. Um, and also gives us that extra you know, that extra day's rest before the game comes on uh, on Sunday. But I, I just think that's what we've we've all got to be prepared for. We said it were going to be different times. It, it certainly is. You know, it certainly is in the way we uh, we're preparing. Obviously, playing behind closed doors is very very different. And I think as we've seen, we've seen it happen in the NRL with late COVID cancellations and fixtures being moved around. I think that is just going to be par for the course when situations like this arise. Hopefully. Um, we could keep the outbreaks down and I know that's in incredibly difficult but at the same time you know I know internally here we're as, as vigilant as possible and, and our staff well I think sometimes the players think it, it's a pain in the backside for them you know our staff are, are right on top of uh, I guess how we conduct ourselves our behaviours what we do when we're outside of the uh, outside of the club and all this so hopefully they can contain it to just this week and it's going to cause some disruption a little bit of disruption for us, but more disruption, obviously, for the teams that are, uh, you know, directly affected by it. Wigan held on for a win against Wakefield last week. Uh, yeah. they're, they're going to present a, another tough challenge. Yeah, they're right at the top of the competition, and I think they've obviously got some world-class talent in there. You know, Jackson Hastings has taken on where he left off, albeit in different colours. You know, he's still a very dominant. Um, an important player for Wigan and I think you know the look at the way they're defending I think they're a team that are you know tough to break down on their own try line that's for sure and uh, you know I always think that at the start of the season the teams that finish above Wigan generally are, are right in there when the whips are cracking I don't think that's going to be any different this time I think they've started the season in really in a really good vein it was a close game last week but I thought they were pretty solid you know for the 80 minutes Wakefield come back late and I thought Wakefield looked pretty good too but I thought Wigan no, for, well, for the biggest part of the game, look pretty comfortable.